I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and welcome to the drive home to Hawkesbury where I believe every home has a story and I love sharing those stories on real estate in the Hawkesbury with you. Here we share the best ways to add value to your property, how to avoid the common mistakes people make when buying and selling property and how to get the maximum return on your investment with a focus on supporting local business. I live love Hawkesbury and can't wait to get into today's episode with you so let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening depending on when you're watching this episode. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and today I'm lucky enough to be joined by Marilyn Mercer who's been a wonderful friend and Rotarian over the years um, and we're just sort of catching up about Rotary and a few other events that are going on lately. Tell me all about it. Well, where do I start? <laughs> Maybe uh, Rotary. Yes, you, yes, you're, well, you've been involved with Rotary, you're very high up within the Rotary yes, um, um, organisation. Oh well, first of all I was a member of the Hawkesbury Rotary Club which folded but now uh, after during that time I was district governor for Rotary and that took in the area from Burwood right over to Lithgow and down to Liverpool and then up to Windsor Road and now that has changed, the districts have changed so now we are part of District 9685 which goes right up to Palm Beach and the Central Coast and through yeah. that area and still out to Lithgow and then along the river to Parramatta. So that's our district now. Yeah. It's a very big district, one of the biggest in Australia. Yeah, it's something to be proud of too. I started with Hawkesbury and with Marilyn yes, and we, and we Yeah, yeah. <laughs> president of the Hawkesbury Club, that's right. Yeah, yeah. we but yeah, it was there was no well thank you. You've yeah. done so much for Rotary over the years and, and I've seen you help so many different communities. We were only having a chat just a minute ago when you were talking about nine different countries that were being helped with some of the projects that some of your people are involved with. Yes. And I think Rotary over the years has morphed a little bit. It's been very traditional with the way in which people have done meetings and so forth and their systems in places which everybody respects. Yes. However, I believe that Rotary is really moving with the times, yes. becoming um, with their e-groups that they've had and mm. um, Rotary groups that you don't actually have to attend. You attend the meeting, but you're online as you're attending. Yes, Maybe well you could tell everybody meeting, about yeah. that. Well, my club is the Rotary e-club for Greater Sydney. And we have members who um, have been in Melbourne, South Australia, and they actually join the club meetings from there. It was the first e-club in Australia, but now it's classed just as a Rotary Club, but we still like to call it the first e-club in Australia, of course. That's <laughs> yes, a, that's a claim. Um, <laughs> Nothing wrong with yes, that. <laughs> but we have, about, we have me members who come and go because of different reasons. Some of them are there because they can't get to a traditional meeting or they're working overseas and so this um, way in which we hold our meetings is that we use Zoom and we have two meetings a month, one on the uh, Sunday night at 8.15 and one on that's the first Sunday and on the third Monday to give the people who can't get there on Sundays or vice versa, we have it on a Monday night at 8.15 and we just go online yeah. from wherever in the world we are. We're in Seoul for the Rotary International Convention and I was still go, able to go to my Rotary meeting Isn't from that great? the hotel that yeah, night. You yeah. know, so, um, and our members, as uh, Rachel just said, we have many projects going through the world yeah. with our members. We have nine Rooks projects and these include Cambodia, Fiji, um, and uh, all over with medical equipment. Uh, the um, but we, they're just hold, you're held in awe with some of these projects that people are running. Yeah, and we just love it. Yeah, and because um, it's not all about. Yeah. It's not all about meetings, is it? It's, or it's barbecues. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Once when I was president of the club here uh, in, in the Hawkesbury Club, I had a, pro, um, a competition for students for a poster competition for Rotary, and it was to show what Rotary does. And one little, uh, nearly everybody did people cooking barbecues. Because <laughs> that's and, what they're known and for. Yeah. Little boy did one that was Rotary chariots. <laughs> Because charities, but yes, it's charity. Charity. Chari chariots. Chariots. Yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, but it had a wheel. He could have. Uh, yeah, well, that's that, right, the rotary that wheel. wheel. That's yes. exactly right. Yes. The four way yes. tests yes. and all sorts of other but, things. Um, you see, I, I'm not so involved with overseas work, but I've been secretary of the club for the last three years. And also, um, I have my other projects. I judge the Police Officer of the Year awards for uh, New South Wales, which is coming up soon. So yes. I hope people are nominating 
police officers and in the five categories, the volunteers in policing and the special squads and so on, and make sure that your local police are being nominated Recognized. for what they're, being do yeah. what they're doing. Some of the Rotary Clubs have their own Police Officer of the Year awards for their own area. Sure. This is for the whole of New South sure. Wales. And well, maybe we can get people to... Uh, I'll put a link on this for people and then they can nominate. What What's oh, the yes, cut-off period for yes. that? It's cut off this year because yeah. we're starting to judge next month. I OK. Yes. Yeah. yes, we're coming in close to judging now sure but when they come in you know oh, we receive these great piles of nominations of course yeah it's a very difficult um process but we get it done and it's yeah. great and you that's just once again in awe of these people you know yeah. it's awesome the whole thing that's right that's something. right Yes. Great to be part of it and yes. also great to recognise the police officers that are doing such a great job at the front line and, right. and protecting us and doing what they need yes. to do and to, this to be there. Looks at, uh, uh, they get their awards in their own job but this is looking at um, service above self which is okay. the Rotary motto. That's right. So you look at what they should be doing with their job yeah. and you'd say well that's what you'd expect a police officer who's employed to do but you look at what they've done above and beyond mm. that in this award. Terrific. Yes. Yeah. No, and that's uh, that's really good. And and there's a few other projects that you're working on the science experience at the yes, moment. Tell me a little bit about one, that. Yes. This is, uh, as a science educator, I taught in um, New South Wales for 38 years, and uh, and in my my last school was one of the local schools here. And I uh, always promoted the science experience. It was something that was started by Rotarians down in Doncaster, Victoria, yes. in 1988. So it's nearly 30 years, about 30 it's years. It's a long it's time, isn't it, for something yes. like that to be running? And, but, yes, yeah. it's supported by Rotary Clubs, Rotarians and Districts, but also the general public yeah, and yeah. people um, uh, will sponsor students uh, themselves. But this is something for years nine and 10 students. Okay. And it, they go to the universities in their area, anywhere in Australia, every state I think we've got something, 34 to 37 institutions run it each year wow. for three days and the students don't, it's not a competition to go, it's just the, the want to go to learn about yeah. science and they go for three days or four days but we cover nearly everything from A to Z with the topics that they can cover in these Great. various institutions, you know, starting with, say, uh, astronomy, but yeah. then you go right down to zoology. But in the meantime, you've got all the other things. And one of the ones um, I'm able to, or any of us could go and watch, mm. and, you know, if you're sponsoring somebody, you might like to go and have a look at it. Sure. Um, at any of the universities. I went into UTS at Christmas time last year, and I went yeah. in with the forensic science. Oh, that would have been a Exciting. I wished I'd been a forensic scientist, you know, but you look at these, you know, in my day when I did, in my schooling, I didn't have any of those chances, you know, and yeah. the teaching of science was great, but yeah, you, know, yeah. you look at these other opportunities. But if anybody wants to know more about this, it'll be great. and. I think you're going to put a link. About yeah, we'll put a link on the line yes. here um, for everybody that wants yes. to get involved. So, what's the process of applying? I mean, they they apply somewhere, yeah, and well, this is the pamphlet, and inside that's the application form. Yes, but it is online yes. on our um, website, and also um, people can pay for it themselves, or they can ask that they need a Rotary Club to sign their form. Now, the Rotary Clubs may pay half, or they may pay the lot. The lot. And the thing that they like is that the student comes back and talks about it later. And, Great. And there's never a bad comment about it. And um, when that comes through, the cost this year is $150 a student for the three days, or 200 for four days. Yes. We've just started in, in Victoria, and I think, you know, this is great for any of the um, states, um, an agricultural science yeah. program too for students. Oh, so that's awesome. That's getting more yeah. back into the agriculture again, which we need. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so uh, tell me, from the kids that have gone over the years in these sorts of projects, what has the feedback been? Um, you know, to Rotary and the talks that some of the students, yeah. like I've been there at the times where some of the students have been there, and it's just been wonderful. Tell yes. me tell me what yes. you've experienced from well, that perspective. Well, just recently we had a, a student who was coming from far uh, north, Western Australia to Perth, and he had to come by himself because the fam there was a single mother with children mm. uh, at home, so he flew down by himself. We, because for example, my club, we give donations to help the isolated children, so we have a fund for that. He came down and I sent a, this really 
uh, blew me away. Mm. I sent to four Rotary clubs and said, would you bill it or take this child in, mm. you know, to them, pick him up, take him and look after him, you know, as you would for this for the th three days. And the first email came back and it said, don't bother about asking any more about this. And I thought, oh my heavens, what's going this? He said, I'll take him. How you good's know, that? I'm sitting there thinking, oh, they're saying not another <laughs> yeah. thing what I was to do. And yeah. I just felt so great. It yeah. made my day. Yeah, yeah. I'm just looking for billets now for students who are coming to Victoria to the, um, and also Flinders and um, Swinburne. I'm trying to get billets for those. Okay. And so that's another way and also um, paying for buses and they'll bring four of them into town, you yeah. know, that sort of thing. I find that that's the way of Rotary though. There's a lot of people that put their hand up Yes. regardless of whether they've got the time or the money yes. or the, the right. you know time to do what they yes. need to do but everybody well, just seems to keep turning up boy for example and this getting them at year nine the aim is to let them see the full gamut of science or yes. a bit more of science and then they'll choose it for nine and for years 11 and 12 yes yeah. because you know they're, they're, we're losing people because you know their children aren't going to the science subjects mm. and this, this will uh, encourage this them to get them back so, in yes, it's based on science technology engineering and mathematics so yeah uh, it's all there in these courses but isn't that you know, wonderful it's, it's a, a great thing and that's i'm pushing my barrow there but other things that we're supporting are days for girls yes. have you heard of days for girls tell us about that so that the people online oh, can right. hear Days Maybe come into the screen a little bit so oh, everyone can see it. It's the long and the short oh, of it today. Right. <laughs> uh, Days for Girls is a project which has been started by somebody in America. In some countries, girls don't miss so many days a month because of when they're having their menstruation. And so they have to stay home. Okay. And so these are kits that are being made and taken to the schools. And the kits, um, one person in my club run so aid mm. which means he takes sewing machines to different countries the women pay a small amount yes. so that's not a handout it's a okay. hand up. Yes. they pay a small amount for their sewing machine as they make money yes. but they are making these kits for the girls but oh, wow. we have pockets of people yeah. here in australia sure. one group in penrith makes them mm. that's one of the closest i can think of and some up in the central coast yes so the kits have soap and and pants and these liners and flannelette um, inserts and the girls can actually wash them. They've yes. worked out the bag and everything, little bit of water, wash wow. them out and use them and over and over again and still go to school. Wow. So if you think every month the girl was losing up to four days because she couldn't go to school because she had no facilities. Yeah. Losing the education as a result of it. Yeah. So they've added all those days to wow. their schooling. So this How is what's that? It's called days for school. Yeah. And the, 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 when they do the ads, they say days for girls, period. A bit of a joke yeah, on yeah, what's going on there. Really, yes. <laughs> but, you know, the, it's a, one of those, another, another or mm. inspiring things. Yeah. And then, we have one of our, our people who who's started a school in Uganda, that, uh, that's called School for Life, and it'd be great if you looked at that. But they, uh, she we'll put all TV. the links on this video as well, so oh, that everyone can see, and yes. I'll get all the information from yes, Marilyn. So. Um, Annabelle started this school when she was, my first school over there, when she was 21, she's up to her third school. Wow. And uh, it's all through people, she has balls in Sydney, and you know, she'll, she's, Georgie Gardner has just been Yeah, she was on TV, like, wasn't yeah, she, so recently? Nine. Yeah, but having it an interview. It was on the morning show and then the news on Friday night or sometime, I might have been on Saturday night, it showed part of that, but the video is there for people to see. And these so, are all your fellow Rotarians that yes. are helping out one another. I mean, Some you've had an illustrious Rotary. career with your, your Rotary and you've done so many things for so many people. And, you know, I want to thank you for the support that you gave, especially my business when I started out many mm. years ago. I mean, I remember the barbecues that the, the Rotary Club of Hawkesbury helped me out with and, yes. and we had a, a charity auction. And we and had we, a photo in we the We did! That's right, standing there, the long <laughs> shot of it again. Yes. But, um, I've that's still been, got that. Yeah, so much. Yes, your ad was in there. That's right. <laughs> that's yes. right. But it's all about supporting one another yes. and I, that's what I've found well, over the years. We started as four people who were businessmen. Yes. And Paul Harris, who started it in Chicago, he was lonely. He'd come from a place and 
he, he just Racine, a little town, and he was used to where, you know, you'd go down the street, everybody knew everybody else, and the men sat outside the shops like Pop did for the mascot, <laughs> yes, and then yes. it was to do the shopping, <laughs> and uh, he got lonely, and, okay. he was, and they started to meet, mm. the four men, four businessmen, and then they started to go to each other's house for a meeting, the meetings, because they didn't all go to the same place. And that's how they got the word rotary. Because right, because they were rotating houses. in a circle. Mm. And um, from that, they thought, we better do something to help. We, we're sitting here doing nothing much but yeah. talking. We'll hurt, help our local community. And it's little known that the first thing they bought was a horse and cart for the local doctor. And it's, I found it once in some obscure place, and now I'm still trying to find where I found it. But the main claim yes. to fame that they all, everybody yeah. says, if you ask them, is they built the first public toilet in town wow. for the use of the local people. And there's a photo of them opening the, the first public toilet. That's, that's great history in Rotary, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, Rotary is very similar to what Hawkesbury is that yes. it's a local community everybody cares about one that's another right. mm -hmm. and you want to help one another do what you need to that's do right. to get the yes. job done for yeah. people so um, that's yes. what I like about it and, we'll and you've been in the area for such a long time yes. tell me about the Hawkesbury for you and what it's what it's been like living in the Hawkesbury and mm -hmm. what it is you know well um, the funny part about the Hawkesbury is a lot of my family was buried here in the early days and I didn't know that before Truly. we bought yeah. our, our first house here in this area and t I taught here and then I found that the eighth burial down in St Matthew's churchyard mm. was one of my great grandmother's great 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 Truly. back and then uh, and her name and her husband oh his her husband's name is on the uh, in the park up here in the um, Thompson Square great and then their daughter married the, um, no, a convict. So the child of two convicts married a convict. His name's there because he was the um, sawyer for the team that built the road over the Blue Mountains, worked for wow. William Cox. So my history goes yeah, right back. Yeah. And, you know, I, I Even though you got convict stock, you turned out all right. Well, I got, <laughs> well look, there are 13 <laughs> convicts at the really? parents on Nana's side. See. None of my grandmother's family who came to Australia were not convicts, they were all convicts. Gee. And people say, how could you have that many? Well, we go right back to the first, second fleet, right through, you know. It's really interesting, the history, oh, isn't it? When you yes. can track it online and with ancestry and... and yeah. then I came back here. Um, we came back from the country because we'd been teaching in the country for many yeah. years and sort of, people say to me, oh, um, are you local? And you know what some people are like with local. <laughs> and I say, yes, we are, thinking of them. <laughs> You know, we went away for work, but we came back again. <laughs> so we did come back. We went to Frien up to um, Currajong Heights, yes. bought a house there. That was hard travelling down and back up and each forth, day. Yeah, but it's not yeah. that bad. No. Um, and then we thought, no, we need a different house. If we've got people staying and the family was getting bigger, because we've got five children, 12 grand and two great grand. So we thought... You've been oh, busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we bought the house at Freeman's Reach. Okay. It was lovely. And yeah. But too big then as the yeah. kids weren't there and we were there by ourselves rattling around and we had mum and dad staying in part of it because they and then we thought no we'll come into Windsor bought the oh. house at Windsor yeah and then um oh, first thing we did when we came back from the country though we went we're in Northmead so we went from Northmead North Mead. but it wasn't countryfied so yeah. we were missing the country yeah and then, yeah then we went up to Courage is that Road, what so. you love about the Hawkesbury like the country oh, the yes, regional yeah. sort of feel mm. about it and we're still in a semi-rural area absolutely but, uh, I have a book um, I forget what it's called now it's the most, it's called the birthday and it shows me what it's like going along R R uh, Windsor Road okay yeah. Because yeah. the first birthday, the mother's standing with the little one mm. looking out the window and they're looking at bushland. There's a one card there. The second day, you can see a fence going up and then it goes on and on. Oh. And you can see the house it's coming wow. towards them. And I think it's about the 12th birthday. Yeah, it's everything's Everything. built and there's the big M. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just so much like yeah. Yeah. what's happening now. Especially that Richmond right, Road, yeah. we'll come back into the screen because oh. we're losing oh. you again, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, That's coming it. down Windsor Road yes. and Richmond Road, you know, yeah. there's lots of changes and yes. even from a feng shui perspective, um, there was meant to be in the Sydney Belt um, area that was 
part of where the backed by the mountains and yes. the sea on the other side yes. and there was a lot of growth and those sorts of things so we expected that there'll be a lot of development yes. a lot of um, you know earth moving mm. a lot of new homes being built and that's very true of that and certainly for the first home buyers grant that's come in um, that's reignited a little bit of interest for all the buyers yes. and that in the yes. market from the first of mm. July but um, so living in the Hawkesbury you've loved it you've been a teacher for 38 years no, well, um, yes, I, yeah I've been retired since oh, when was that yeah yeah, it's the teacher that everybody loved to, to be a student of her class, I believe. Oh, I went back to a reunion in Tamworth where I used to teach, and one of the fellows there, I didn't know that he was, whether he was a student or one of the teachers I had taught with, he really? said to me, Miss, as they always call you, even though you're an old great-grandmother, <laughs> oh, no, I'm not that old, and um, he said to me, you know, I really wanted to do, be in your class in year 11, but they didn't, they didn't do my subject that I wanted, so I left school. And I thought, oh, my God, oh. <laughs> here's a man that's 50, you know. Yes. They're getting to that age. Yeah. You know, you, know, and you just can't tell the difference. No, <laughs> no, but it's so important that I was only talking to Sherilyn from the Ebenezer um, Art Show, and we were talking about teachers and how they form our learning and how they form you know pave the way make the foundation yes. strong for us moving yes. forward and what what we head towards and what it makes it important for us to look mm -hmm. for so i mean what's the best thing that you found as a teacher over the years best i liked teaching the students who needed more help okay i asked for them yeah um as a head teacher i still like that mm. you know i i found that you know, the brighter students, they are able to manage, no matter who teaches them, but those others, mm. they needed that extra help. And, oh, I could write a book almost about the funny you things should. that happened. You should. You would not believe some of it, you know. <laughs> I, I, you know, looking back over it, sure. little things that they wrote for me and things like that over the years, they were just beautiful. Nice memories. And I had deaf children integrated into my classes at some stage. Isn't and that good? That was interesting too yeah. because they always had to lip read you. Sure. And so I tended to, and teaching in science because of the um, practical work, mm. I'm not very tall as you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, don't know you what you're talking about. <laughs> science labs and, um, no. you know, trying to watch what the naughty boys in year 12 or 11 or whatever and the <laughs> girls, you know, what they're doing with the Bunsen burner and so on, but still. I, I My dad's got a it. few stories about Bunsen burners too, I believe, with his science. But oh, anyway, we won't well, go there. Yeah, I'll leave that for him yeah. another time. The silver, <laughs> the silver um, pencil sharpeners, you know, they... they <laughs> Uh, but um, yes, it was, you know, I must say it's the students, no matter yeah. what I t what subject I taught. People say, what did you teach? And my thing is, I taught children. And yeah. then I say, but I taught them science. Yeah. Or, you know, I did teach maths for a while and I have taught, uh, uh, depending on what they needed in some of the schools. Like I was in the central school. And sometimes they just put you in with the... Um, uh, home economics, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, computing or something like That's that. That's it, you know? yeah. <laughs> and you're always there, a great teacher. Well, oh, well, I just wanted to thank you so much for your time today. Yeah. Um, you're rich with history of, of the area, of Rotary, of so many great things. If we want, um, if people that are watching or listening want to get in touch with Marilyn, we'll put some contact details on this video yes. for them. Mm. And also the science experience, if yes. they want to get involved with that and put an application in for their children to, you know, get that, we'll send that through to yes. you and also Rotary if anybody wants to get involved with Rotary because it's such a great cause and we do mm. so many you know all, when I was involved with Rotary we did so many good things with yes. with the community and Marilyn's still carrying the bat on with yes. that and yeah. and helping other people as she does and I'm sure um, there'd be a lot of Rotary clubs that would welcome your yes. um, input and um, membership yes. so definitely we'll put the links on here and anybody that wants to get in contact with Marilyn she's um, never short Thank of a you, word or two I, yeah I hope I hear from you all <laughs> I'm sure you another. absolutely <laughs> Nicely. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah terrific. Great. Thanks thank very you. much for your time, Marilyn. Oh, really thanks, appreciate Rachel. it. Okay, thank, thank you. you. We'll see you on the next episode. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking time out listening to today's episode. If you have any questions on the process of buying, selling, leasing or strata management, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and I'd really appreciate it if you could spread the word by liking and sharing this episode with your family and friends. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and I look forward to catching up with you on the next episode of the Drive Home to Hawkesbury.